Hey everybody, welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm your boy Abram, joined as always by Mr. Tucker Hazel, and I'm calling him Mr. here because of, of, oh, yeah. of this. I've edged um, up! That that uh, that Xbox showcase put some hair on my face. <laughs> put some hair on your face, it puts some games on the calendar, uh, and Tucker, we have uh, one hell of a showcase okay. to talk about here. Uh, because this Xbox showcase is being deemed by many online as a third coming of Christ, yeah. That a near unimpeachable showcase, uh, exactly what Xbox needed. Yeah. Um, this, that, and the third. And I think we've got a lot to talk about. Um, but we're kind of going to frame it around one central question, which is how do we feel now about the future of Xbox? Because obviously this showcase was so important, not only because there are so many unknowns within Xbox Game Studios, but obviously because in light of recent news, yeah. the fate of Xbox has never seemed less certain. Yeah. Um, and I've got a lot of thoughts on how I feel about Xbox as a whole yeah. moving out of the showcase. But Tucker, I want to throw it over to you for your thoughts on how yesterday went. I think it was, I think what was most impressive is that they impressed me two years in a row. And that r- rarely yeah. happens, frankly, for year on year summer showcases from people. Even Nintendo, I think, has had some pretty down summer showcases. We actually just put yeah. up a, a Nintendo Select episode talking about summer showcases during the Switch era and how they've pretty much ranged in quality. I mean, some years for Switch, we've gotten like nothing or we've gotten like a partner showcase or whatever. So that's very different. But Xbox, I think, has been the most miss for me in terms of E3 showcases, summer showcases over the course of the last decade. And last year, I was really, really blown away that there was new game reveals, new IP, yeah. trailers with a lot of gameplay, updates on games. And for last year, things saying, okay, we're, we're planning out our 2024, uh, Avowed 2024, Hellblade 2024. And then this year... Some of those games have come out. Some of those games are still coming out. But this year, uh, this year's showcase confirmed that finally, God Almighty, the dominoes have fallen. And the games are starting to come out at a seemingly consistent pace. And that is not yeah. one or two, if you're lucky, in- mildly interesting games a year, but three or four. And then some other ones sprinkled alongside that. And so 2024... That this year's lineup, which we're going to talk about primarily, is really, really yeah. strong and it has already started, but they have already set up a number of solid titles that they are currently slating for 2025. And then we also know so many projects that it feels like the even beyond for the next two yeah. two or three years is going to be pretty impressive. So I think that this is exactly what they needed. And I The tune has changed very quickly. And I, and I certainly think that we'll talk about that yeah. in terms of... Um, how the community and, frankly, the internet conversation about Xbox has ebbed and flowed, especially over the course of the last six months, with things being looking pretty doom or gloom for a while. And now things look doom. Uh, but that's good, because Doom Dark Ages looks sick as hell. Um, and, yeah. and they just showed off so many games, and we got updates about games we weren't expecting to hear about. And I thought, basically, everything looked good, and there were some cool third-party announcements. So, yeah, I... I'm perfectly happy with this. And if the worst thing that you can say is that some information we wish we sh- would have gotten in this showcase, primarily, and we're certainly going to talk about this, the release dates for yeah. Avowed and Indiana Jones and the Great Circle not being in the showcase, uh, that I think that's the worst thing you can say about this. Yeah. But, we're, but they're slated for 2024, so we're going to get that information soon. So all the, ultimately, it uh, doesn't really matter. It, 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 I, yeah. I agree. I think it's one of the best showcases that Xbox has ever done. It was just no fat. It, it, to me, there was some fat in the world of live service games. And let's show Elder Scrolls Online. Let's show Diablo. Let's show World of Warcraft. Let's show Fallout 76. Yeah. Let's show Starfield. Let's show Sea of Thieves. Way so, so much of that that Xbox has, but it has to be in there. I can't really complain about that. But that's my only gripe with it. Is there a shit that I wasn't interested yeah. in? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we talk about this often with like the Pokemon Presents when we have to do the Here's His yeah. the Cafe remix. Yeah. Um, but, but I think the difference is that. That these are games of of uh, more substance, Correct. right? Yes. It, uh, fans. A, yeah, a big pillar of Xbox's business, and especially now that they have Zenimax, are these ongoing games. Yeah. And I think that uh, you know it, you just got to bake it into the cake. You yeah. know, if we're doing an hour and a half, and then also COD, if yeah. you got a ninety minute showcase, you're going to spend fifteen minutes on these various live service games. I think that's fine. Yeah. The, the Diablo one I felt was a little egregious because mm-hmm. I just played an intro cinematic, but the rest I don't really, yeah. I don't really care about. Um, yeah, I agree with you on the whole. I kind of feel like I've I've got a number of of thoughts about this showcase. I also think it oh, was wow, fantastic. That, 
Um, I think one, one thing I want to sort of start with from a very high level is um, a lot of the tweets and just general uh, commentary after the showcase about, well, it's hard for me to really get excited about any of this stuff because Xbox is just going to shut these studios down. Yeah. That's a reductive way to put it, but that's what a lot of people yeah. online are saying. And I, I, I think cynically that stuff is does that's the zeitgeist opinion to hold right now. Yeah. But I think practically it is a very obvious concern and question and and point of discussion. Yeah. Uh, and I saw that Ryan McCaffrey didn't really get an answer out of Phil Spencer as to what happened yeah, to Tango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I also heard they didn't push him very hard. No. So I feel like there's a little bit of error all around. But I think ultimately people want things from Xbox that they're never going to get and Xbox can never give. Yeah. Xbox can never get up on that stage and say, hey guys, we fucked up when we shut down Tango yeah, Game yeah, Works. Yeah. That, is, that does not do good, that. look good optically to the people who matter to Microsoft, yeah. which is your stockholders and which is the people and yeah. the higher ups that control what message is put out. There, there are restrictions even on Matt Booty and Sarah Bond and Phil Spencer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for as much as Phil Spencer is very good at PR, yeah. he's very good at navigating himself into situations where, frankly, he's asked soft questions, whether that is on the kind of Funny Games Daily, yeah. as great as those guys are, yeah. or Ryan McCaffrey, as great as a f- voice as he is, they are not the they are not the people that are going to ask Phil the questions that, frankly, Phil needs to be asked. You, you just set up um, Phil Spencer with David Jaffe, and David Jaffe will say whatever the hell he needs to say. <laughs> yes, but I, I think people have to be very realistic about what what can what can Phil actually say? Yeah. What, what, what can they actually provide? And the reality is, in my opinion, the only thing they can provide of real substance is an affirmation that the future is going to be different and the future is going to be better. Absolutely. And this and, absolutely did that in terms of yeah. a game's lineup, which is totally. the thing that has been critiqued most heavily for from and to totally. Xbox for, I would say, close to their entire existence. I mean, there are certainly a lot of very strong and memorable titles on the original Xbox and the Xbox 360, but it has been a dec- over a decade since Xbox's first party lineup and the games they've been publishing have been top of the industry. And last year into this year into next year, it seems like they are building their way up in a really strong way. And yeah. that is the exact thing you were talking about. The admittance, the uh, the forgiveness, the back end dealings with Microsoft putting pressure on Xbox, putting pressure on the studios. These are things that, yeah. you're right, realistically cannot be talked about in a place like this. Also, primarily yeah. because that that not only doesn't really communicate confidence in the way that you see your future going, but also because 90% of the people who watched this showcase yesterday have no idea that any of this happened. They did not yeah. play Prey. They did not play Redfall. They did not play Hi-Fi Rush. They have no idea who Shinji Mikami is. The vibe around the online conversation around they need to apologize for this because shutting down to those studios was very brutal is not reflective yeah. of the consumer and business reality of this showcase. And so I agree. I think they did what they <coughs> needed to for the majority of the audience because I think a wider amount of the audience is can, is wor- wondering about how is Game Pass turning out? Where are these games now they've acquired these companies? Where are these yeah. games going to go? And they delivered what they needed to here. I think the only thing missing from like Full confidence and integration would be more Activision games and Blizzard games coming to Game Pass, which we basically saw none of except for the con- confirmation that Call of Duty Black Ops yeah. 6 was going to be coming to Game Pass. Um, that's the only thing I think was kind of missing from like fully kind of incorporating everything together. Um, but games and games that are coming imminently and games that are coming down the line and games that are coming next year, there was a really good balance of everything you needed to show yeah. from the breadth of studios. I mean, they have what? 30, 40 studios at this point. It's the biggest conglomerate of game developers in the entire world. And you felt that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you did. And, and the, I think the other thing people were saying that, again, is just a social media dunk, in my opinion, is, well, what else would you expect when Xbox has yeah. uh, become a mega monopoly? Yeah. And, and I think the reason I find a lot of conversation on Xbox to be frustrating, even though I share a lot of these yeah, similar of issues people have about the brand, is that, Xbox has now become the force that they are. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. Yeah, yeah. We can't undo that. You can't disassemble them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if it might anything, happen eventually. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, if it, and if Tango and anyone's any indication, it's going to come with the dissolution of the studios. Yeah. It's not going to come with a sell-off. Mm-hmm. 
Xbox has proven in the past that even though they are this big monopolized force, they can't get games out no. the door. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but this showcase is starting. We were actually feeling that hard. at the beginning of the generation, yeah. before they bought the bigger conglomerates, we're like, right? They they bought all these studios. They like doubled the size of their internal Xbox Game Studios team. Where are the goddamn games? We were feeling that five yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, and and so I. I for me, it's part of the cake, yeah. right? This, these are just facts about Xbox. And so if a- Xbox, yes, is this very flawed, business-minded, mm-hmm. sort of outside-of-games force yeah. being pushed onto the game space. That's true. The fact that they shut down these studios is true. All of this stuff is true. The, the deleterious effect on Game Pass for the yeah. overarching games marketplace is true. Yeah. At this point... They can't come out and apologize. They can't come out and change their mind. They can't, they can't come, come out and, and say to be like, "We're sorry that we have devalued no. games and shifted things towards digital future." <laughs> they can't say that. <laughs> no. What what they can come out and do is say, "We have we've we've put ourselves in this position. We've put the industry in this position. Now we have to own it, yeah. and we have to show why well, they this is it. not fair." Enough. Okay. Okay. That's a good thing to acquire it. <laughs> They just have to show that what they're doing, what their strategy is, is a strategy that they're going to still hold on to. It's a strategy that they're going to execute on. Mm -hmm. And it's a strategy that's going to have benefit to the players and to the wider game space. And that was what was in jeopardy. And I think that is what they fought against yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think that by having so many undated games far out beyond 2025, what that is, it's a recommitment to the xbox Mm -hmm. brand showing those that all digital xbox series x showing the new colors for the s is a commitment to hardware Mm -hmm. i think sarah bond even said something i mean it's the same platitudes you hear from every company about the next next generation generation of xbox yeah yeah to me what they communicated on the whole now we get into the particular games but they communicated on the whole that yes they are going to do what i think i heard Jez Corden was reporting as Project Latitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They're yeah. going to get their games on other platforms. They're going to pursue this Xbox Play Anywhere strategy, which has clearly been the plan since before they yeah, were in Jeopardy. Um, this is going to happen, mm-hmm. but there's still going to be an Xbox under your TV, and there are still yeah. going to be a lot of great Xbox Studios games yeah, for you to play totally. this whole time. So I, I thought it was a very, very, very successful show. So yeah, I absolutely. think we should get into... The actual games now. Let's get to the game. I don't know who said that. Uh, was a quote from someone. <laughs> where do you, where do you want to start? Or let's put it to you this way: what, what was your? If you had to give me one highlight from the show, yeah. If you had to pick one game, what would it be? I the, the I think, Tucker Hazel game. I think the answer is obvious, and that is doing yeah. the Dark Ages. I mean, that is the only yeah. game that got me like hooting and hollering. I am very excited for Life yeah. is Strange. I am very excited for. Um, for mixtape, these are games that are more my speed in terms of narrative and cool right. art styles and stuff. And I have enjoyed first-person ca- shooter campaigns. I have enjoyed what I pl- I, pl- I beat um, Doom twenty sixteen. I really like that game. Um, but I, I I feel like I'm never surprised by FPS games. I think yeah. when I played through Wolfenstein: The New Order, and I was like, "Whoa, this is like really goofy." And then I, I played through some like Titanfall 2's campaign. I'm like, "Oh, these are like they have cool level design here." There are some FPS games, especially with campaign ones, that I'm impressed by in certain moments. But yeah. usually, it's like, "All right, we're going through the motions." But when Doom: The Dark Ages starts off, and they've completely redesigned the Doom Slayer, and he's got this flowing fur coat on, and he's got this new design, and he's got a spiked captain america shield that he's blocking lasers with and the the world seems a lot more open he's flying a dragon and there's a mech and i'm like they went they like completely reinvented doom for this and but one of the smaller more niche community sentiments is like oh they're just incorporating things from quake but if that just means that doom gets a sick ass flavor and we get a great game I'm all for it. And Doom Tucker's subtweeting. He's subtweeting the BLV discussion. He's subtweeting the BLV discussion. discussion. The the crawl immunity discussion. Um, but shout out to the crawl immunity. Go give Brendan money. Give Brendan money your Hess. Go give Brendan Hess your money. Um, but 
I think this game looks great. I think that trailer yeah. was phenomenal. It will probably be out in middle of next year or something. And 2025 yeah. is totally fine for that. That didn't need to be the Fallout 4 Metroid Dread style thing. This is out in three months because we have a very busy from Xbox second half of this year. And so, yeah, I'm not expecting that to hit this year. Next year, totally fine. I get to see that game again in a Xbox yeah. developer show, uh, underscore direct showcase uh, at the beginning of next year. I get to see another sick ass trailer at their showcase next year. And I'm going to play it in October of next year. Perfect yeah. cadence. I think that's awesome. I think the game looks great. I think they it looks like they really are trying a bunch of different cool things and and stepping outside of their comfort zone from what Doom and Doom Eternal were. And, and Doom Eternal stepped outside of, of Doom's comfort zone. So it is just, they're one of the best doing it. And this game looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am, I'm surprisingly excited about it because I think, I think Doom 2016 is okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty good. I've never played Eternal, although I'm going to have to rectify this ahead yeah. of uh, Dark Ages. Sort of my issue with Doom 2016 is that it's uh, repetitive sure. to me on every level. Mm-hmm. In, in that the I'm always going to use, I always have a hierarchy of weapons yeah, and sure. until they run out of ammo. Yeah. And I'm always going to just hit them until they're glowing so I can get a glory kill. Mm-hmm. And the environments just funnel you through the exact same gameplay loop the whole time. Yeah. I, I like a lot of very repetitious games. Mm-hmm. Devil May Cry, Halo or whatever. But there's always either room in the Halo sandbox to experiment with different strategies right. or, or the I'm, physics I'm of, play- of yeah. Halo definitely add some variety. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or I'm playing DMC and I'm unlocking new weapon abilities. I'm trying them out yeah. in combat. What, what doom, the dark ages is showing me is not only a lot of variety in terms of the big dragon and in terms of the mech, but the, but the mace, yeah. the shield. Yeah. And it looks we're, like we're there's some physics a lot of, stuff. I mean, he's knocking people yeah. up in the air and shooting them and stuff I'm like that's, really cool yeah. <laughs> we're, we're seeing a uh, what what to me appears to be a lot more uh freedom sure um uh, in in how you approach combat which to me is really really exciting so i think the game is going to be awesome yeah um my highlight he's got one uh yeah i think for me the highlight would probably have to be uh avowed oh okay cool i think Interesting. you know i i that was the first trailer I went back to rewatch. Mm-hmm. It's a game I'm really, really excited about because I, I enjoyed um, I enjoyed the Outer Worlds a lot. Yeah. I think Obsidian makes really cool games, yeah. um, and so I, I'm super excited to to get into the world. And I and I feel like we obviously, I mean, this is evident, but every time we see the trailer, we learn more mm-hmm. and we get a better sense of of the art direction, yeah. and we're seeing these cool dungeons you can explore. Obviously, this was a story trailer, so. I think Avowed is is one of my most anticipated games oh, sure. uh, across yeah. this whole slate from Xbox Game Studios, um, and Indie is right up there too. Yeah. And and it might sound like a little bit of a, of a criticism of the showcase mm-hmm. that my two most anticipated games coming out of it are the two we already knew about yeah. and seen extensively. Yeah. But I think for me, it's just a testament to the fact that these are such yeah. outstanding looking games yeah, from its outstanding I, developers with outstanding pedigrees, and that is the exact reason yeah. why I'm excited for both of those. I. I think those two games, just knowing where the developers have yeah. come from and the games that I've enjoyed from them of the from the past, um, I'm fully confident that those will be some of my favorite games of the year and could be some of the best games yeah. of the year, which is, again, something that Xbox has kind of been lacking in terms of competing in that top of the year conversation. It, it's every other year, maybe, that they get one game in that conversation, but Hellblade yeah. seems to be kind of out of that, but... Uh, Avowed and Indie, if they hit, could certainly be a part of that. Um, and, but the reason why I'm I'm stipulating all of this is I don't think that either of these trailers did anything for me specifically. I'm excited for both yeah. of these games. But to me, Avowed has kind of looked the same every time I've seen it. But I also know that's sure. a kind of game world. I'm not exactly a fantasy guy, so it doesn't like visually, doesn't like I don't, doesn't spark yeah. me initially. But I also know that Obsidian is so good at crafting a world and building a world that immerses you with personality that I just need to play it. And I just need to know, I don't know what the story of about is. I don't know, what the, I don't know the yeah. point of this world. I don't know any of the characters. So it's one I need to start, hear a little bit about, get a character that, that interests me, learn about the factions, what is my character there for, and I'll be all over it. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure I'll be all over it. And Indy is yeah. another, another one where I, th- I thought what we saw looked good. I w- I'm not, I don't exactly know why they committed so hard to having basically an entire story uh, cutscene play out I thought that was pretty weird in terms of pacing but every time yeah. we saw edited together stuff that was more gameplay with music that was going I was like and of course 
I'm sure that that scene will be great yeah. in the context of the game. But I'm like, I have no idea who these characters are. I, I don't know what's happening here. Um, and I love the Wolfenstein games. And so yeah. I, I'm confident in these games. I don't think that either of these in this showcase with these trailers that were given in this showcase sure. were my favorites. But I'm I'm positive those games are going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, and and I I rewatched the um the the indie segment too because I mean we we talk over the showcases yeah. so I'm, I I pay half attention yes. usually when I'm watching this for the first time, and and really watching it I think the reason that they had that extended look is because they were trying to really illustrate the extent to which this feels authentically like oh sure Jones. totally yeah yeah and and I think that that is kind of going overlooked a little okay bit. yeah I mean Indiana. I've loved Indiana, Indiana Jones since I was a kid, yeah. and there's a very particular feel to Indiana Jones. It's obviously so up until June of last year. You love that series. <laughs> I still love that series, that right. and and Dial of Destiny I have seen. That is yeah, true. Yeah, have seen it. <laughs> and so I I think that Nolan it's Nolan North, right, or Troy Baker. They're interchangeable. It's one of them. But whoever's doing it whoever sounds is a hell of a lot like Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, it's great. The the quips of the dialogue are yeah. great. Uh, the the I I think that the gameplay looks a little looks more compelling here because everything we're seeing stitched together communicates a lot of puzzle solving and mm. it communicates almost a slow pace to the gameplay mm. that I think is going to be really interesting because ultimately Indiana Jones is is an action series mm. but there's a lot of puzzle solving yeah. a lot of just exploration totally, totally. and I think that's going to be fun because for me uncharted I love uncharted yeah, but I love uncharted Primarily for the shooting. Yeah, it feels like you play Uncharted and you're playing the part where you climb the wall, mm-hmm. and then the part where you shoot Absolutely. the gun, and then the part where you look at the I, puzzle always, solution on the yes, internet. I've always talked about it as the the anal bead structure of video game design, which is an open area here, a linear area here, an open area here, and a linear area here. Am I wrong? I'm just gonna say no because I I like that I like what you what, where you've taken us. But. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I think both those games look exceptional. I am concerned that they're not gonna launch this year though. Okay, sure. And now now we there was the weird posting of the November 12th release date and and removing of the November 12th release date for Avowed. My theory was that when they do this extended gameplay showcase for Avowed, yeah. they'll just confirm that date. Um, and this might, by the time you're watching this video, this might not even be a worry anymore. Yeah. Um, my thought process there is that what they're trying to do is just have a reason for that portion that yeah. to, to be covered by the media yes. because if it was just gameplay, the coverage would be a lot slighter. Um, <laughs> Everyone needs to make an article about this is when Avowed is releasing if you put the Avowed release date in that thing. Yeah, and, and whether or not that's a good PR strategy, I don't know. Whether that's even what they're doing, I don't yeah. know. And that's where I have a little bit of concern because I totally. think it was... I think maybe Tom Warren, but it was one of the one of the people who report on Xbox a lot were saying that they've heard that internally the game has moved around mm, a bunch. Mm, yeah. Um, and that these twenty twenty four windows are basically just giving um machine games and obsidian the time to make that final call mm. but i kind of think you're getting to the point where you got to take the shot yeah, it's I like agree. the new bad boys movie near will smith you've got to take the shot sure. right there's all if, well, if you don't take, take the shot, shot. well and that's what i'm gonna say there's always a recourse yeah. if you're fast enough you can correct and you can't be fine Maybe you're going to be shot kidnapped but, by a bad guy with a fucked up hand who knows but i i just think that they're running out of time yeah. I, but I, I agree I, yeah i i i yeah. think that the 2024 window is I think it's fine, and yeah. even if the games do slip in, if one of them slips, I don't think both of them will, but if one of them slips into the first part yeah. of next year, knowing what we know from the half-assed thing yesterday, it would probably be Indiana Jones. I don't think that's a bad thing, because it seems like somehow they have accidentally made an overcrowded second half of the year, frankly, with uh, with the the Age of Mythology game and... Um, and Aura and Towerborn and one of these two games and Microsoft Flight Simulator, they are publishing a lot of games in the second half of the year. Yeah. Um, and so if Indie is a February game next year, okay, that's fine by me. Um, what it really means, yeah. one thing I really hope it doesn't mean, and I heard a little bit about this, and this is what I'm worried about 
for a couple of small reasons, but I really hope Indiana Jones doesn't end up being December because if Avowed is November and they're not sure about Indy and so it can't hit October, I hope it doesn't hit like middle of December because this is the kind of big IP game that in order to really hit needs to have immediate popularity and coverage and needs to be purchased by families at Black Friday. The, you need to have all of the yeah. marketing stuff put up in the holiday season. And then it, it, knowing Machine Games track record and especially for Xbox, they need some awards push for this kind of game. Uh, and if if it hits too late to make TGAs, I, I think that's I think that'd be really unfortunate because most December games, except for Smash Ultimate, are just sent out to die. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know if there's any like. I just think Xbox is insulated from all of this stuff. Maybe be, because I mean I think it was. Um, the guy on Twitter that has the Dynasty War Warriors I don't, PFP that, talking about sales numbers that doesn't all the time. Me. I don't remember his name. Sorry. I don't really know what Dynasty he was Warriors talking, looks like. He, he was talking about how a lot of Xbox games have if somewhere... If you put Edelgard in there, though, then I'm interested. Have somewhere in the ballpark of, like, an 85% digital attach rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the reality is Indiana Jones is a massive IP that's going to move itself. Mm-hmm. And... Xbox has already marketed the game now. They could come out and say it's on Game Pass tomorrow, and I don't really think that does anything for the sales of the game. Mm. Because this game, they have, have at least as of now, not said it's coming to another console. It yeah. definitely will. I think so, yeah. It'll definitely come to PS5 at some point. But ultimately, if you put Indiana Jones out on Christmas Eve and parents preloaded it onto their kids' Xbox Series X, mm. all six of them that are getting a Series X for Christmas... Yeah. I just don't really think it matters. Yeah, I, 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 the reason I would disagree is because I think that this is a big enough general consumer yeah. IP to where I think it will have a larger split of people that are buying it physically. I think it will have a physical presence in game stores. And I also think this is the kind of sure. the game that could sell consoles to the general public in that you want this to be something that a Indiana Jones uh, box with an Xbox and yeah. and 12 or 24 months of Game Pass is a bundle you can buy at the holiday season. I want to play this Indiana Jones game. Yeah. Get me an Xbox Series S for Christmas. That that kind of thing, I think... This but is then this you can't have a physical copy. Because here's my point. I, if you get yeah, a Series... I guess that's true, but... It, it, all of the... Every piece of hardware Xbox is pushing this holiday season has no disc drive. Point. Even the new Series yeah, X new, has no yeah. disc drive. You could sell an Xbox. You could, if they announce in September that the game is coming in December, and they have that Xbox Series X on store shelves in November, you do the Smash Ultimate thing. Yeah. You buy this, and it's going to have Indiana sure. Jones pre-installed, or more likely, you just get a year of Game yeah. Pass, and it's like Indiana Jones is just on the mm-hmm. box. I just think that Xbox is playing a fundamentally different game. Sure. We've talked about this forever, but they they are clearly. We know how many copies of Starfield were destroyed by like Walmart or whatever. <laughs> And, and now the and now Xbox isn't even pretending to sell a, a system with a disc. Yeah, yeah, anymore. true. I I just think that they have a a unprecedented amount of flexibility That's as to true. when they could drop yeah. a game. And the problem with Hi Fi Rush is, is stealth release that there was no marketing before the stealth release. It was no, a stealth course, announcement yeah. and yes, stealth yes. release. I honestly think they could. On November 18th, they could wake up and say, Indiana Jones is on Game Pass today. Now, they won't because it's the day before Microsoft Flight Sim. I picked a bad date to say. But there's no reason why they couldn't do that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know about... I don't know. I don't know about that in just in terms of how... It's an extreme bit, example. Yeah, of course it's an extreme example. But it's like, it's a big company, and you got to make sure Machine Games is ready and the communication and all of that. And... and, and Game going gold and all of this stuff. Like I, 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 they did it for Halo Infinite. They did what? They released Halo Infinite. Really surprised everybody. They just dropped them a whole multiplayer. Oh, thing. the multiplayer. Yes, yes, that's true. They're willing to do whatever. I just don't. I, I think that a December window me, means the same to this game as as a as a October window does. Just mm. again, if you're trying to push hardware, you just give you the person who buys the Series X gets a year sure. game pass and they're playing indie. Yeah. I just don't. You know, I, I just think it's I think it's a different calculation. Yeah. Well, the, the final thing I will say on that is, I I don't know the difference, but it feels like usually once a game gets a release date, that's when its marketing cycle really really starts. Is okay, we know that this is coming out then, yeah. so we need to start two weeks before. Here's a gameplay demo. Two, uh, yeah. One month before, press gets their hands on it. Like there is a rollout to that that gets buzz talking, and if it's just that general window, I think that communicates like. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, when when will this be happening? When will the press get their hands on? When, when do we send out review copies? Because yeah. if you if you shadow drop it even a week later, what do you do about review copies? Like there there is a bunch of stuff that I think goes against it being like as tight of a turnaround yeah. as you're suggesting, especially because Microsoft is such a big com- co- corporation and Xbox is massive and it's just one of their things. And so I think that planning and communication are key. And I think that what we saw here with a different cadence of release windows and yeah. giving uh, Avowed and Indie the time to choose their slate a little bit later in the year and then things announced for 2025, some things not dated. That, I think that breadth communicates a variety of, of confidence and time skills that I think was good. And so I'm not worried about Indie. And it, whether it is an October yeah. game or a February game or a March game, I think the game will be great. And I think that it will yeah. be really fun. <laughs> I mean, the only other concern I have about this year ultimately is like, if you remove Indiana Jones from the year, mm-hmm. you, there's there's not a ton of significance. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously oh, I you yeah, have no. Black Ops, you have Black Ops Six by merit of of the acquisition, yeah. right? And that's and that's huge. But that I, I think there's going to be a little bit of a of a period of time mm-hmm. until that feels like an Xbox game. The I same agree. way yes, that yes. Y- you know they were able to command ownership over Starfield, I think, quicker than I thought. Yeah, totally. You know. And now Doom does just feel like a Microsoft game. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're not there yet for COD. I agree. Yeah. Um, and the only other game of consequence this year is going to be Avowed yeah. as long as that comes out. And Hellblade already released. Mm-hmm. And for as much as it's like, it was Hellblade good or not, it has an 81 in yeah, Metacritic. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it did as good as the first game. Mm-hmm. And Aura, Age of Mythology, Talorborn, Flight Simulator are largely irrelevant. Yeah. No, I as interesting yeah. as they're ind- individually going to be, they... Basically, I'm just concerned that they that the reason these have 2024 windows mm-hmm. and not hard dates is because Microsoft is pushing to avoid a double delay situation sure. like what screwed them out of Redfall in Starfield yeah. in 2022. I totally agree. And that would be, I think, quite bad if that happened again this yeah. year. <laughs> um, no, totally. But again, I think very key yeah. thing you started that with is if one of these games misses this year... This year doesn't suffer too much from it because, again, this is a momentum game that they're playing. It's studios yeah. releasing their games at a cadence. And frankly, I don't think it would be... I, I actually think it might be good to have a stacked holiday season yeah. with a release lineup that is Avowed, Flight Sim, and uh, and Call of Duty. That's a great holiday. Three big games of different yeah. genres. That's different a fair games. point. And then... We don't know what first half of next year is. That doesn't necessarily yeah. mean anything because they have the developer underscore direct in what, January, February, like really early in the year. And so if Indie is early part of next year and also Fable and Doom and South of Midnight hit next year, that's a great year. That's four big yeah. games. And so that and that's the great thing about what this communicated to us. And so we are not talking about, oh, we saw some games. I think you could love this criticism at their presentations from 2019, 2020, yeah. all, all these, all these previous years where it was things that were that have frankly gone silent even until basically yesterday. Uh, games like right. Perfect Dark and Contraband and State of Decay and these games that are just that were just dead. And and some of those we don't know when they're coming out, but they they're feeling more imminent. The current calendar yeah. this year is full. Next year looks like it'll be full, and they just have so many pieces to play with that. A couple more games will probably hit next year on top of what we have right now. And then it just continues forward. So let's talk about yeah, the 2025 right. set of games. Uh, we talked a little bit about Doom, but South Midnight and Fable are also slated as of yesterday yeah. for 2025. And again, that's already three games that I'm interested in. And they can spread out over the course of the year and all have different genres. And that's, again, communicating confidence. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about uh, South of Midnight. That was another highlight for me. Yeah, looks very good. Um, yeah, I, I think the combat looks a little stiff. Sure. I don't really know how fun that looks, um, but I really love the music. I really love the animation yeah. style. I, I really like how the the, the, the movement looks mm-hmm. through this this bayou. I think the game is, is shaping up to be very unique. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I saw somebody, uh, probably a Nintendo fan, <laughs> make a p- image like oh i can't tell any of these xbox games apart where they just picked one like um like beige toned image out of every single game from that yeah. showcase and like these are all like the same and i think that's stupid and yeah. i think that south of midnight is a great uh recommitment to xbox's sense oh, of variety yeah. and i and i think that xbox has a better sense of variety in its published titles than either nintendo or or hmm. or sony sure. do and so I think it's just another. Well, they great, also have um, uh, new IP. 
uh, which Sony has yeah. kind of now with things like Stellar Blade and Concord, but Nintendo yeah. doesn't have it all. And we don't really complain about that because most Nintendo games are really good. And it's kind of like a, yeah. a different playing field that we're working with. Um, but I, yeah, I agree. I think the variety is is very key here. And South of Midnight Fable and Doom Dark Ages, the three games that are slated for next year. Again, I don't think those will be the only games that hit next year, but still no. three games that are currently slated. They're all very different gameplay-wise. Those are three totally different genres yeah. of game, and that's awesome. And, and I also agree. I think South of Midnight looks really, really good. Um, I, yeah. I think that it's maybe the animation that is contributing to the combat at first blush looking a little bit stiff. I yeah. think that the uh, lower frame rate animation of of Hazel, the main character, and like other some other environments uh, elements in yeah. the environment, but not all of them. Um, the enemy also that she fights is also moving at a lower frame rate. I think that that is probably something that they will either tweak before the game comes out, or yeah. it won't feel weird once you're playing it um because i don't think that they can afford for this kind of game to have like weak combat because it seems like other than the vibes that's the primary thing of getting into these battles and dodging around and using these flashy attacks so i don't think that it will be uh stiff in execution but i actually i do agree that in this trailer i'm like it looks cool i'm liking these the like flashiness of these animations but there is something about it that does not quite feel like we've been seeing a lot of Third person action games dodging around fighting a boss that have like 120 FPS and super yeah. ridiculous animations. And this one was just a step below that. It might be the intentional art style. It's hard to tell at this point. I, I actually don't think it is, because when I watched again today, I part of part of my issue was that we are kind of going through this environment and then like this barrier appears around you in one enemy. Oh, I see. And you're Oh, that's in, what you mean. You're in this sure. uh you're in this empty yeah. environment with a with a single enemy. You kill the enemy. You like do this cool thing where you where you turn them into dust, mm-hmm. and then the berry disappears, and you keep walking. Um, so I think it's gonna that feels kind of sad to me. Now maybe <laughs> you you would assume that combat encounters are gonna have more enemies, but you'd also assume that the one you're gonna demo would have more than a single enemy. But yeah, maybe I think I, I think the game that really good. my hy- my hypothesis about that is that just what happens in like like scripted like boss mini boss encounters um, because you got to yeah. assume that there are smaller enemies elsewhere or i don't know maybe combat is just relegated to those areas i i guess it's hard to tell because we also don't we don't really know what this game is in terms of puzzle solving and exploration we can get a sense of the combat in terms of you will be fighting big enemies with these you know dodging around third person attacks but we saw some walking around but no exploration we saw some platforming but very very little we saw no puzzle solving we saw no collectibles or anything and so especially because uh compulsion as a studio isn't a studio that has a house style and this is not this is a totally new ip we have no idea we we don't have the oh this is a fallout game fallout games are structured like this thing that we usually bring into many many ip um and so but i think that what they've shown here is that they are really committing to a style that it visually looks really good. I love the lighting. You love the music was fantastic. Um, yeah, the voice acting seemed really fun. It has the sense of of tone that is very unique. Um, and so I'm I'm confident that it will turn into something. But I think there are just question marks here that happen by the merit of this trailer. It's certainly showing us gameplay. Pl- plenty. Yeah. Of, it was mostly gameplay, but n- not enough gameplay to really understand. Is this the entire scope of the game, or is it not? Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's, I say this after every Xbox showcase, but again, this is a reaffirmation of why if you're a player, Game Pass is great, yeah. because ultimately it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, Snowbike Mike, I think, was yeah. saying the same, th- same thing yesterday. Just hop in. If you don't like it, hop out. Yeah. Um, and I think, that's t- I think that's totally fair enough. Yeah. Um, I want to just mention a couple third-party games sure. and then talk about the last two big games okay, from great. Xbox. Um, I am really, really liking the look of Assassin's Creed. Oh, Shadows? Yeah, I think it does look good. Yeah, I think Assassin's Creed Shadows is sort of taking that series to a a higher um, sense of, of like, artistic animation. Sure. And and sort of artistic ambition with these two characters that seemingly play differently. Um, it, It seems like this game... 
especially to that second point, maybe justifying its apparently pretty long run time a little bit better, although I'm sure we're going to get an even be- clearer sense of the scope of the game and how these two characters interact in the Ubisoft forward in a couple of hours mm-hmm. from the recording. But that was, a, that was a highlight for me. I think MGS Delta did not look as bad as I thought it was going to mm-hmm. look. <laughs> uh, although I remain unsure as to whether they're remaking the game or simply putting a new skin over yeah. top of the same mm-hmm. PS3 game, I think that would be a mistake based on how Snake Eater plays. I think that I think a lot of average players are just going to reject This has that. to play like a modern AAA game, frankly. It has to play like MGS5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. Yeah. In, in order to be any kind of success. Because, yeah, okay, MGS fans yeah. would love this to just play like the older games. But... Yeah. I mean, we like playing games, but we've played some of those older MGS games, and they can be pretty clunky and pretty weird, and, fr- and like you, you got to get your head around it. Um, and and I think that yeah. especially this being a non Kojima uh, Metal Gear game and Konami, this will probably be the biggest game Konami's put out uh, in terms of spectacle yeah. and, and and sales potential since in, MGS Five. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh, I think they this this has got to be a, a maybe even to a fault polished triple a experience and um what's the name of the dev team that's handling this or nothing or v uh, virtuous. virtuous yeah yeah um i i don't i not really familiar with them but you you got to imagine they've got konami's boot far up there like right on their neck right now it's like you can't fuck this yeah <laughs> that's almost though why i think it will it, it's likely just gonna be a reskin version of the okay maybe game. yeah B- because i think that there's a either what you're saying is that konami's like we got to polish it up we got to make it play super frictionless mm-hmm. to appeal to more players or they say look we don't have kojima we're not working with the top of the line sure. team here the best thing we can do is just rely on the fact that MGS3 yeah, is considered an all-time classic and we just make the game look Yeah, better. maybe. The, though I don't do think that's know, the right approach. Uh, yeah, but. but also we do know that they are willing to take those liberties with B-tier teams in their A-tier franchises because uh, Silent Hill 2 Remake is currently doing that exact thing where they're changing up the gameplay and yeah. and that'll probably make it appeal to more people, but uh, what's that going to do? Well, and interestingly, I don't know if you saw it, but Bloober Team said that actually the o- original Silent Hill people in Konami wanted to change more of the game, but they wanted to keep it more um, authentic, which to me is a clever PR move to begin to seed uh, a blame... Uh, to, to Konami else, yeah. <laughs> for when the game is not that yeah. good, but that's a different conversation. Um, I also want to mention what seems to be the stand up to a lot of people mm. uh, and even interest me, Expedition 33. Oh, yeah, looks good. And it's this really cool, big, uh, from Kepler and Sandfall mm-hmm. Interactive, uh, like turn based RPG. Yeah. I've said for a long time that. Well, Persona doesn't actually really inspire any games because we're all the big, stylish, turn-based RPG. Well, here's one of them. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's going to be really cool. I, I'll give it a shot. Uh, <laughs> yes, I guess I guess Atlas inspired themselves. <laughs> but I, th- um, I, th- but I, th- I think th- that game looks good, yeah. and I think that that is yeah. a, r- a rare example of a AAA IP, new IP game from a studio that I think... Yeah. I think actually this is their first game uh, that really made a strong, strong first impression. I think that usually, um, unless it's coming from a studio with a very known pedigree, there is some trepidation about and sometimes some visual sameness, uh, especially with, I mean, we've seen actually quite a few of these games in the last couple showcases. Um, and and yeah. this is a notorious thing for me for games that show up at, at Jeff Keighley showcases of a game with AAA visuals, yes, but a lack of identity that, um, right. That contributes to it kind of going in one in one ear and out the other because it's something I'm not familiar with and because it doesn't stand out. But Expedition 33, though, I think that the the name is a little bit weird because it's not also not that it's Claire Obscura Expedition 33. It's a weird fucking name. Um, but yeah. this game, from its really really strong art direction, I love some of the environments they were walking through. There was like this exploding planet in the background, these deep blues and deep reds and stuff, um, and also. Uh, um, a Ben Star being the voice of the main character. That's something yep. that, that, that draws my eye or my ear, I guess, to it. Um, but it being a seemingly a um, Paper Mario style turn-based RPG with some action elements supplementing that is something that we really have only seen in a scant few series and certainly not in a major AAA yeah. game like this uh, in terms of one that has really high fidelity. So 
and also the story seems cool cool and the world design seems cool um so it just it was a really really strong first impression and so that's really really exciting are, are there any other uh third party games you wanted to shut out here um well i mean for me uh uh deck nine coming back with another life is strange game um this is one that has yeah. been talked about in in some interesting ways on the internet and a little bit frustrating to me as i am a new life is strange fan in that i had not, not that i hadn't played the older games but that true colors was really the first one that grabbed me and so my yeah. personal connection and confidence to the games that deck nine is able to deliver is very high and um when i saw this game I'm like dude true colors like blew me away so hard in 2021 i can't believe i'm getting another one of these quote unquote this soon i mean three year gap is totally normal but uh, but yeah. i'm so used to five six year gaps between major ip releases of course this is a smaller team and a smaller game but um it, it looks really good and uh i'm excited to dive into more of the series get a little more context of max, max caulfield's story um and it's coming out this year and that is one of the things that we didn't get so much from either sgf or this showcase uh is new yeah. announcements of games coming this year um there was a lot of we're seeing things again and they're coming this year or we're seeing them for the first time and they're coming 2025 or who the fuck knows um sony did a, f a good job with that with astrobot and with uh Leo horizon those are both coming this year but for me in terms of new announcements coming this year i th i think this is the only one um that are like that that i'm like oh i will be i will be playing that um and so it, it definitely yeah. sticks out to me of like i didn't know about this 24 hours ago and now I do know about it. And now it's uh, like, I was making a list last night of, okay, what are the games that I want coming out? How will I play them? Are they on Game Pass? How much will I have to pay for them? Which platform am I going to play them on? Sure. And I'm like, I didn't buy uh, True Colors Day 1. I didn't buy it physically. I'm rectifying those problems this year <laughs> by buying Double Exposure, Life is Strange Double Exposure, Day 1 physical. I'm all in. Yeah, I, and I think you should just shave your mustache before then because right now you look like somebody that would not approve of Life is Strange, so... <laughs> are there any other games you wanted to shout out before we talk about the last couple uh, of Xbox Xbox titles? Game Showcase 24 I'm just going to quickly P -p Peru you peruse Paul is upset that we're talking about Life is Strange he's a hater oh he like no nod. he prefers don't nod so I gotta open the door for him <laughs> <laughs> oh let's see Fable E Gears Indie Flight Sim Dark oh mm. yeah we didn't talk about that oh we didn't talk about that yeah there's a lot of stuff here um What'd you oh, find? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of games we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> That's what I'm really finding <laughs> when I look at this here. Uh, mixtape is the final thing. I, I I think I mentioned that quickly sure. earlier. Um, but I didn't really like the Artful Escape too much. But I love Annapurna, and this does look like it has a lot more variety, which is something I thought was lacking yeah. from Artful Escape. Um, and so it's coming next year. Great. I'm, I'm all in for that one. Um, and I believe that's on Game Pass. Most Annapurna games seem to be hitting Game Pass recently. Um, so there's that. Um, but uh, oh, Flintlock is hitting Game Pass. I was just playing um, Ashen the other day, and I was like, oh, shit, yeah. uh, Indie Souls like Wait, I, this is kind of awesome. And Flintlock, Flintlock does look good. I don't necessarily think I'll be playing it. Um, if, but if it gets really goddamn good reviews, I, that's the power of Game Pass. I might just drop, uh, drop into it and, and see if it's something that grabs me. Um, but uh, we didn't talk about Dragon Age. Neither of us are Dragon Age guys. This is an interesting trailer in that it seems to be very much changing what I know of yeah. the tone of Dragon Age. I am not familiar enough with the series to say anything with complete confidence. Um, but one thing I do have to say is that they did sell me on changing the name because seeing that trailer, if that game was called Dreadwolf, that would feel very, very yeah, disconnected. Would, yeah. The Veil Guard is a... I, it can be interpreted as like, ooh, that's like a serious thing. I was like, oh, the Veil Guard. Oh. It could have a little jolliness to it. Yeah. Um, but that didn't sell me. That Oh, that's actually... I mean... Technically, the game was already announced, but this is the first time we're seeing it all, and that's coming this year. That's kind of weird <laughs> uh, that it's just yeah, coming out really quick. Yeah, they're doing gameplay tomorrow, but, so um, we'll see. Do you have any thoughts on that one? I, I don't really think it's one we're playing, but no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know anything about Dragon Age. I don't. Care. Um, Save the Day Three uh, is interesting. That game resurfacing, but I think that that was really only a reaffirmation of that game is still in development um, because no release date on that and. I was rewatching. I'm like, oh, I guess there's gameplay interspliced with the cinematic, but it's so hard to tell yeah. that it's like kind of awkward. Um, that was that was a weird one. I, it's not, it's certainly not a bad thing to see it again, but having no even year window on it 
um, is a little bit strange for me. Do you have any thoughts on that? No. Fair enough. That's why I didn't mind moving earlier. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess the other three Xbox Game Studios games. Oh, actually, no, yeah. quickly I want to uh, mention. I think that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 looks actually really good. Um, I watched the... Yeah, I'm going to play that for sure. I watched the, uh, the, de- the developer deep dive this morning, actually. I, I didn't stick around for it yesterday. And whenever I get a chance to watch a highly produced developers diving into different elements of their games, which is something that they obviously have done with the developer underscore direct. It's it, like, it yeah. really makes me love games in the games industry a lot more. Like Call of Duty is something I've played quite a bit of uh, in recently through our um, revisiting the older games. Um, but yeah. it's something I have a passion for, but watching this and watching them go through, did you watch any of that breakdown? Cause they were just some no. crazy shit they were talking about in there. The amount of work that goes into even just the yearly release of a AAA IP of they're like okay so we used to have nine regions on the player's body in multiplayer so when they got shot they react a certain way but now we have fifteen so if you get shot in the arm here and you die your body does this animation and 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 yeah. they, they have this omnidirectional movement where you can dive backwards and turn around in midair and shoot upwards and this thing where like the gun dynamically reacts to if you're leaning around a corner it like adjusts I'm like they. They care so much about this. They put so much work into this. And it also the trailer looked really cool. And it, it Treyarch seems yeah. to be a really con- one of the most consistent Call of Duty developers. So I think this is going to be probably the biggest win from Xbox this year. We'll have to see if the game hits because there's been, certainly been some Call of oh, well. Duty misses recently. But um, everything that was communicated here was confidence, trying new things, bringing back zombies, really cool trailer. I was I was much more sold on this than I have been for basically any other Call of Duty in the last, you know, ever. Yeah, I think let, let's table this because we've been talking about doing a conversation anyway about the art oh, of yeah, AAA yeah. games. Uh, and I think COD is a great example of that because I think anybody who says that COD is just like yearly slop um, does not actually know what they're talking yeah, about. I agree. As an objective yeah. fact. <laughs> um, and I think that... I've had enough ideological issues with Call of Duty to fill a Call of Duty <laughs> game, but I also think that Call of Duty is really fun and that it. Let's have you direct the COD game. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, I do a great job. Yeah. I, I, you I, can handle uh, a book. I don't think it gets Why not a COD? <laughs> COD doesn't get the respect it deserves. Yeah. I'll be playing the Black Ops 6 campaign. And, and that's actually an interesting one because this is something that really signifies to me that yeah. I'm now being pushed to cons- uh, attach this to Xbox in my mind because. The last couple of years, we have you and I have either split the cost of a Call of Duty game so we could play the yeah. campaign, and you played it or I played it, and you didn't like it, I didn't like it. We didn't. Neither of us played or bought um, um, Modern Warfare Three last year. But there's always yeah. been for the last three years this conversation of, oh, are we going to buy this? What platform do we want to split it? And then I was sit- I was sitting there yesterday, I'm like, this does look really good. I I do want to play this campaign. I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that I play Cold War first. Okay, I think you own that. And then I'm like, yeah, but do I really in this season really want to? drop 35 if we split it or 70 dollars to get it and i'm like it's on game pass i'm gonna play this game for sure <laughs> and and so yeah. i had like a like the the clouds parting i don't have to worry about spending 70 dollars on this and i get to play this cool ass looking game and so that definitely like attached call of duty to game pass and xbox in a way that had not happened to me before yeah yeah i mean i think it still takes some time for me but i think yeah. that you know i own every happened. single call of duty game on PlayStation. <laughs> so it's going to take a while for me. <laughs> yeah. Not Vanguard. Or unless you have, did you buy a copy no. of Vanguard? No. But Vanguard sucks. Um, we digress. Yeah. We'll go through the last couple here quickly. Fable, I've got nothing to say about Fable. Yeah, it's. I'm actually pretty confused about the one. I, I do have something to say about it in that um, it looks high production value. I think the game looks really good. I like that yeah. it's a. RPG with a sense of humor, and uh, I I know nothing about Fable personally, but it's something I'd like to learn about yeah. because it's apparently one of the most important Xbox IP. But let's be real, no one talks about it. Let's be real, no one talks about it. Um, but I am a little bit confused by their hesitancy, hesitancy to move the uh, move the marketing of this game forward because ostensibly what we got yesterday was not too much more in depth than what we got last year. It was mostly. Yeah funny cinematic guy talking over it and then some there's there's more gameplay that's for sure there's more gameplay in this one but i'm like this is this is not the game this is a very cut up interspliced with narrative and interspliced like i don't think that these 
the narrations or these narrative yeah. ca- like the narr- narrator characters are going to be part of the game necessarily so it's hard to tell what the actual yeah. game is what is the scope of it what what is the actual narrative of this game um and so i'm excited to learn more because i playground games is a developer with a very good pedigree it's yeah. very interesting that they're going back to this after just doing forza for so long but I don't like that this was basically the same as last year's thing in that I don't I know guess, what yeah. this game is. <laughs> I mean, I, I could guess. I could go back and watch old gameplay, but what is this game? Um, but it's coming next year, and so I imagine... Oh, my God. He's he's doing like the Romans uh, did. I'm on a very uncomfortable futon right That's now. Right. We, got, we got more to say. But so my, my final thing is that it's coming next year, and so I assume yeah. developer underscore direct, February, gameplay deep dive... Breakdown by yeah. Playground Games, cool trailer next summer out, you know, July or something like that. Um, I, I, I'm I, not worried about it, but I don't like that this was basically the same thing as I felt last year, except for I know a year this time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I just don't know anything about Fable. Yeah, because no one talked about it. Uh, Perfect Dark and... and um, Yo's. Perfect Dark and Gears, I want to talk about in the same breath, actually. <gasps> um, Take a deep breath. So you can talk about it for a while. <laughs> These games to me really exemplify why I think the Xbox ecosystem is really fun to be sure. in. Uh, because I, you know, like I have played a little, I do like, I do like shooters. Uh, but also I have played a little bit of Perfect Dark N64 yeah. uh, on my Series X. Mm-hmm. And I put a little bit of the first Gears of War, but that's it. I'm I, I'm I'm not a fan of either series simply because I've just not yeah, invested yeah. enough. Time. You don't dislike them. You're just um, not a fan well i dislike gears of war oh, but okay. i think that uh, i think i need to give it another yeah. shot i just i don't they're, they're too they're too big yeah the guy the boys um, physically yes but I, I i i was very intrigued by both of these games mm-hmm. um and very excited to now go back and play the necessary yeah, games yeah. to get caught up and experience both e-day i thought that was a very moving cinematic trailer yeah. even though i was not did not have the emotional <laughs> characters <laughs> Fake gamer. <sighs> Continue. Uh, that's a different conversation. <laughs> and then, then the per- and perfect dark I thought looked very good I too. Really good. I was, I mean, there's a lot of people saying, "Oh, it's fake. It's fake gameplay." I think that that's just not true, because if you think about like the the fake cyberpunk demo, or you think about the infamous Killzone Two demo, yeah. I think if you look at those closely, you can obviously tell those are mm-hmm. fake. And when you look at the Perfect Dark gameplay, you can obviously tell that they are cutting yeah. Yeah, well, gameplay yeah. to make it look faster, even within one sequence. Like they're 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 using cinematic cuts. Yeah, to yeah. Make and the, they're like the gun. Sometimes they'll speed up the footage just a tiny bit so it goes boom boom. Yeah, boom. yeah. I mean, it's clearly it's clearly modified, but I don't look at that and say, okay, well, when we play this game in twenty twenty six or whatever, it's going to be markedly different or or demonstrably yeah. Yeah. worse. I thought that, that was a really good demo and a great illustration of how perfect dark can fill a different niche absolutely than a lot of other fps yeah, games absolutely. do big single player seems like some immersive sim mm-hmm. elements some stealth elements yeah. some dying light style parkour elements mirror's edge yeah. whatever touchstone you want to apply there so i am really really excited about that game um and e-day as well and i'm excited to now through Game Pass, go back and play the Gears and yep. Perfect Dark games I need uh, well in advance of both those because those are the two big uh, looming but undated yep. titles. No, absolutely, I think Perfect Dark actually might be my second game of the show. Uh, I guess third. Yeah, Life is Strange, Doom, and Perfect Dark. And Perfect Dark um, is the one that surprised me. I know I like Doom. I know I yeah. like Life is Strange. I know I like ID. I know I like Deck Nine. But the yeah. initiative is a new team. And yeah. uh, I guess I could say I know I like Crystal Dynamics because I played Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, but uh, this trailer really sold me on this game. And I think you're exactly yeah. right in terms of filling a different niche. Again, shooter campaigns to me can sometimes feel like they fall in the same bucket. Now, I'm talking a little bit out of my ass here because it's a lot of I don't have hands-on experience with some of these Things like Resistance and Killzone and Metro and even Stalker, which looked good, but these ga- shooter campaign games seem to fill a similar niche in my mind. Where I'm like, eh, I'm not like, I don't want to necessarily jump into that because yeah. I don't know how it's different at first blush. Um, again, I don't have hands-on experience, so I'm not like I'm not crapping on those series. It's just it's just my first blush impression of those. Yeah. But 
Perfect Dark, new team, new series to me, and obviously very different from the older games uh, in the series. This trailer showed me a, I think, an instantly unique looking world. I really like the fact that this is futuristic Cairo that also has a lot of foliage in it, but it's mixing in these sort of African Middle yeah. Eastern elements of architectural design and, and, and clothing and things. Um, I love the idea that they're mixing the shooting and gadget gameplay with things that I really like, that being the option of stealth and the immersive sim elements of of using gadgets to find a different path and experiment and stuff. Yeah. Um, I and and then at the end, there's like these flashes of this crazy sci-fi alien narrative. I'm like, I'm I'm all the way on in on this. I I, I think it looks yeah. really good visually. I think the gunplay looked really good. I liked the fact that there was parkour, which as far as I know is a more new element to, to, to this game. Um, but yeah. I, I, this was a really strong showing, especially because it's not a game that we expected to see. I mean, this game not only has gone silent for the entire generation, but the latest reports was that it was having tr- problems. And now that might still be true. This yeah. is a trailer. But I I expect this game to hit 2026. I expect it to have a really good showing next year as well. And a big game. Maybe this is the game that gets the full deep dive breakdown post conference next year. I think they I really want so. to sell this one and seeing it seeing cinematic seeing gameplay seeing gameplay variety this was exactly what this game needed to go from a yeah. teasery teasery cinematic thing to we've seen plenty of gameplay of this game now and it gave me a totally different vibe than i was expecting yeah exactly i, I mean i was it was just one of the things i wanted to actually most see and I yep. think I'd mentioned this to you before the showcase happened that I hope we're going to see it. And we did. And I, and I wonder if that was them putting it in a vertical slice in part to be like, yeah, the reporting, take it as you will, yeah. but we are still working on the game and it does look good. So I'm quite excited about that. Are you, uh, I, I know you've only played Gears of War a very little yeah. amount. Are you motivated to play more after that uh, trailer for E-Day? I am. And I am not necessarily because of that E-Day trailer, though I do think it was yeah. good. And, and that's one of those instances where I have no issue with that being a, uh, a cinematic trailer. Yeah. I thought it was a good cinematic trailer. Um, and, but from what I know about the evolution of the Gears of War series is yeah. that it seems like it trends in a modern direction in a way that I would prefer. I think that it, it sounds like when you get into 2 and 3 and then the Xbox One games, it, it, there's a little bit more focus on narrative and set pieces and things um, and a little bit more exploration and collecting and things. Um, so... I, it's a series that I do want to get into. I thought that the yeah. first game was okay. I thought it, I thought it was fine. Um, I, have, I yeah. frankly have no feelings on it either either way. I guess I would say I skew positive a, a small bit, but sure. that was a good trailer, and I would like to be in on that game as more information is coming out. Uh, again, familiarizing myself with areas of the industry that I yeah. that I don't have experience with is something I'm very hungry for and, and very much have a drive to do. Uh, and that is a series that is obviously just only second to halo in terms of importance to xbox fans yeah um and but it does seem like the characters and narrative are a big big thing for this game in particular for a couple of reasons so i i I want to be in on that and so i i expect myself to play a gears of war game on game pass every couple months you know over the course of the next year or two um and i assume that there'll be one of the big releases of that year and it's been it's been a very long time since since Gears Five. Uh, I'm glad they're going back to Gears of War. So they're just Gears, um, and E Day not being six, yeah. it, it being a prequel is actually probably going to be pretty interesting. Um, the interesting thing about yeah. Gears of War is that it starts even from the first game, straight in the middle of the years. The war has been going on for years at that point. So I, I assume we'll probably get a more, um, like the prequel parts of uncharted 3 style like introduction to the world before things have like changed uh for a character so i i think that that could be something that really sets that game apart yeah i mean they're just doing halo reach i mean it's yeah. natural that gears of war would get its halo reach right um and i i mean i love halo reach and there's no doubt that that's that that game is not at the center of, of um what's this team called the dev the coalition oh, the coalition yes yeah uh, I, I would imagine reach is at the center of their mood board um so yeah. <laughs> i think that's gonna be really cool yeah. i i'm i'm i i really want to give these games another shot and if they're all like eight hours long i'll just play through all of them in yep. sequence like <laughs> oh, holy that shit. Was my cry <laughs> so i'll uh, just plow through those bye bye july um, 
<laughs> after I finish plowing through the Destiny 2 campaigns, which I'm doing right yeah. now. Um, but yeah, Tucker, I was, I was on the whole extremely impressed with the showcase. Yeah. It was a reaffirmation for me of why, um, I, I think Xbox is in just such a fascinating position for, Absolutely. because as much as I take issue with how Microsoft is maneuvering it, when you think about like a philosophical level, about the future of the games medium, the reality, and I said this in our group chat yesterday is I'm a massive fucking hypocrite yeah. and there is no better consumer side proposition than what Microsoft is yeah. offering. And I think that this is this sort of showcase that makes it a lot harder for someone, even like me who cares deeply about the negative impacts of game pass to even care. Yeah. And I think that, Take that as a positive. Take it as a negative. Take lose all uh, confidence or trust in my I, opinion. I, I, I think the reality is that's fair enough. These are the sorts of showcases that make me very glad that I am as invested in Xbox as I yeah, am. Yeah, totally. And I'm very excited for basically everything they yeah. showed yesterday. I, I feel the exact same way. I have I have issues with it, but I also think that I have always been rooting for Xbox, even in the weird, aggressive, and frankly potentially deleterious ways that they have been. Because yeah. it makes the games industry more interesting. Uh, it, it, it makes things evolve. This is the current state of the industry. The 2020s will be known for these acquisitions and the shift to game pass and subscription services. Yeah. And that is a fascinating period of time to live through. And finally, what they showed me last year, but I think really this year, especially with how many more big AAA games and gameplay we saw this year, um, is that the dominoes are falling as they, as yeah. they have been, we've been wanting them to for so long. And that... They now occupy, not in terms of like my personal interest, but in terms of knowing what's coming up, they now occupy a bigger set of my mind share than Sony or Nintendo. Nintendo has not gone yeah. yet this summer. It's, it's unlikely that they'll have a more exciting slate for the second half of this year than, than Xbox. But this is one of the first times where I'm like, yeah, Xbox actually, they're, they're putting up a real good fight. Like, like sincerely. Yeah. And since I started caring about video games, it's always been... Oh, they've got ReCore. Oh, oh, they they're doing uh, Dead Rising Four, and that didn't really hit like that. The vibes on Microsoft, yeah. I think, have been off for a very long time. And now there certainly have been some games this generation that I think show a wider artistic variety and a, a greater success for, uh, um, meter than they had during the Xbox One. But this is yeah. like this is the real shit. This is oh no, they have. We already know they had so many games in in development, but they're starting to come out and. Two, three or four of them are going to hit a year. And so, frankly, they're probably going to be dominating the conversation for the next couple of years, which is something that definitely has not happened in a no. long time, which is really, really exciting. And it'll be interesting to see how, especially Sony, responds to this because Sony has their own giant stable of developers that they do need to start announcing games for them. And I think that this will push them to maybe announce some of these games a little bit sooner than they would have because now they have the, they're kind of on the back foot. I think people are way more impressed with Xbox's showing than Sony's. And I think it yeah. look, makes, I think actually the same thing happened last year, makes Sony look a little bit worse in comparison uh, when you look back at what that state of play was versus the biggest showcase Xbox has ever had. Um, and so I think that competition is good. And they put themselves in a competitive place by kind of weird, scummy, maybe monopolistic means, but it's competition for Sony nonetheless. Uh, and so, and, and Sony does work best when they are forced to do something. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see how, how good all these games are as they're finally starting to hit, but also what the impact this will have on the wider conversation of the industry, because finally, I feel like I will have a a third eye opened. I had one eye that was PlayStation, one eye that was Nintendo, and now... Whoa, the Xbox eye is opening. Sure. And I will be able to see cl more clearly the breadth of the industry with that third eye. <laughs> Tucker, I think it's been a very good conversation with Xbox. I was just checking. I don't think we've really missed anything. We had a very, very thorough discussion, I think, of that whole showcase. Um, and yeah. We'll be back soon with that Gears of War Judgment review. It's time to talk the Bach. Hey, Phil. What's, what's Bachin'? That's what they say whenever they walk to work. Hey, Phil. When the act is Bach and hey, don't Satya come Nadella. Crazy cartoon. Do you think athlete. Satya Nadella even knows that the Xbox show happened yesterday? <laughs> Do you think you even know? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it.
Oh, wait! Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, make sure that, make sure you swallow that. Make yeah, it goes okay. down. Done. Let me check. I got to I usually, whenever, whenever I drink something, I swallow, swallow two or three times to make sure it really got down. <laughs> sure, sure. Prove it to me. You swallow any water left in that mouth there? No? Okay, yep. Looks good. All right, we're ready to start.